Representative Itza requests unanimous consent of the House. Madam Speaker, I was just going to make the same motion that Representative Brown did, but I'll second the motion that's already passed. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm up here not because I particularly want to be, but because my oath of office compels me to be. If you all recall, last, last December we all took an oath of office. In it we swore to bear true faith and allegiance to the United States of America and the state of New Hampshire and to support the constitutions thereof. We also swore to just impartially discharge and perform all the duties incumbent on us as representatives according to the best of our abilities agreeably to the rules and regulations of this Constitution and the laws of the state of New Hampshire. That doesn't seem like such a big deal. But let me read to you Article 1, Section 10 of the Constitution for the United States. No state shall enter into any treaty, alliance, or confederation, grant letters of mark, and reprisal, coin money, emit bills of credit, make anything but gold and silver coin a tender in payment of debt, pass any bill of attainder, ex post facto law, or law impairing the obligations of contract, or grant any title of nobility. I'll distill that. No state shall pass any law impairing the obligations of contract. So what am I driving at? On May 6th of last year, this House had an issue before it, Senate Bill 153. 295 of us voted in favor of that bill. That bill impaired the contract obligations of automobile franchises. It was a patent violation of the Constitution for the United States, and therefore, those who voted in favor of it violated their oath of office. Again, you may say, well, what's the big deal? That happens on occasion. But we also pledged to uphold our, to perform our offices agreeably according to the laws of this state. There's a law that's been on the books longer than this state has. It was part of the original body of colonial law and it was accepted under this Constitution as not being repugnant to it. No person chosen or appointed to any public office or to any position where an oath is required under any law shall exercise such office or position or perform any act therein until he shall make and subscribe the oath or declaration as described by Part 2, Article 84 of the Constitution of the State of New Hampshire. And any person who violates said oath after taking the same shall be forthwith dismissed from the office or position involved. So on the day of that vote, 295 of us disqualified ourselves for the office of state representative. Now maybe that's, maybe that's comical to you, but I don't consider it that comical. Where, where I come from, my word is my bond. And when I made that oath to uphold the Constitution and the laws of this state, I meant it. Now, I don't really expect all 295 of you to resign your offices. I think that would be a little fanciful. But I would hope that when you are considering future actions of this legislature, that you will be more considerate of the constitutions which you swore to uphold. And we will have some bills before us this session that we will need to take careful consideration of. They, they will be revenue bills, tax bills. Our Constitution is very specific on whom we may tax and what we may tax them for. Article 5 says that we are allowed to tax inhabitants, residents, and estates. Nothing beyond that. Missing from that list, you might recognize Franchises are what we call incorporations in today's parlance. We don't have lawful authority to tax incorporations directly. Article 6 describes what we may tax them for. 
We may, the public charges of government, or any part thereof, that's what isn't raised by fees, may be paid by taxes on coal, that's a head tax outlawed by the federal constitution now, and taxes on property, or actually the word is estate, which is both real estate and chattel. And that was expanded in 1903 to include other property, including franchises, we just discussed those, and property when passing by will or inheritance. Then Article 6B authorizes highway taxes, and Article 6, 6A authorizes highway taxes, Article 6B authorized or legitimized the lottery. You'll notice missing from that list of taxes that we are allowed to impose are income and sales. And in the debate on that amendment in 1903, it was specifically mentioned that it did not include transfers. They said transfers are not property. Sales and income are transfers. One of, in the closing argument on the debate, it said, one of the members said that he did not believe that it included any tax on income, though he thought there was a desire to do so. It was never refuted. Now, how do you know that taxes on income and uh, sales or transfers are not property? Well, if any of you have any familiar with accounting, income and sales appear on the profit and loss sheet. Property appears on the balance sheet. If they were property, they would appear on the balance sheet. So before we go exacting taxes, that we don't have the authority to, we ought to be very, very careful. There's a word for when you take a person's property without lawful authority. It's called stealing. And there is no difference between stealing at the point of a gun or a knife and stealing at the point of a pen when that pen is backed by the power of the sword. Thank you. Representative John, for what purpose does the member rise? To make a motion, Madam Speaker. You're recognized to make a motion. I, I move that we uh, print these uh, thoughtful remarks in the permanent journal. Thank you. Member Berry, that the remarks of Representative is to be printed in the permanent journal. Are you ready for the question? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. A division has been requested. We are in the voting mode. We are in the voting mode. If members would take their seats. The question before the House is, shall the remarks of Representative Issa be printed in the permanent journal? This is a division vote for clarification. If you're in favor of the printing, you'll be pressing the green button. If you're opposed, you'll be pressing the red button. Voting stations are open for 30 seconds. The House will be attentive to the state of the vote. 116 having voted in the affirmative, 200 in the negative. The motion fails.